Okay, so I'm Alan Griffiths. I work for Canonical on a project known as MIR. And one of the things MIR is about is building confined graphical user shells. And confinement and shells need a little bit of exp explanation. Uh, on a computer system, confinement relates to limiting the access a process has to the system. And a user shell is a program that interacts with the computer on the user's behalf. And is typically a, a way to control other programs and provide access to them. You might be familiar with command line shells such as Bash or graphical shells such as GNOME or KDE. Um, they fill the same sort of function in the space. I'm going to talk a bit more about confinement and the traditional confinement model on Linux systems is that programs can access everything you can. So that would involve the files in your home directory and even files within that directory, which are hidden away from normal use, .config files and the like. And traditional installation mechanisms have pretty broad access to the system. And you can kind of look at it as just running a script written by whoever packaged the things you're installing. The idea behind confinement is to restrict the access to your computer to the only those things that are needed. So a small demo, if I just switch to a command line here and bring that up. Going to just log into a Raspberry Pi here, which has a confined system. So, this is a normal shell at the moment. So, I can do things like listing the directory. Um, I can just all sorts of stuff. But what I want to do here is show what happens if we run a shell in confinement. So, we're still in the same directory. But if I try and list the contents of the directory, I find that I've got no access rights to do that. There's really no permissions to do very much at all. That's a very simple shell and not really the sort of shell that I'm mostly interested in today, but it's a beginning point. I'll go back to the presentation for now. So snap confinement, which was what I'm using there, is Canonical's chosen approach to confining programs for Ubuntu and for other Linux-based systems. They use largely a kernel module called AppArmor under the hood. And the detail in the rest of the talk will be relating to our Palmer because that's what I tend to work with. I'm aware of other confinement technologies. Flatback, for example, uses SE Linux, as does Android. And Clicks, which were used in the Ubuntu Touch phone, also used our Palmer. And the Click technology is a packaging technology that preceded Snap. So a picture of how confinement works. The system on a computer can be divided into the kernel and user space. Like a lot of abstractions in our business, it's not entirely true, but it's good enough for current purposes. So the user space is everything that actually happens directly within the program. It's the program you're running, it's the libraries it uses, um, but it can't interact any, with anything 
without going to the kernel. It needs access to the kernel to allocate memory, to access the hardware, to access file systems, and to communicate with other processes. And in doing that, it goes through a system call interface. The idea of confinement, or this sort of confinement, is to check what it application is doing when it goes through that system call interface. It checks the calls, makes sure the application is allowed to do it, and then passes that through to the kernel. Um, Apama, as used in Snapcraft, is common in Debian-based distributions. SE Linux is common in Red Hat and other distributions, and they do pretty much the same sort of thing. They check the system calls. So the idea is we put all our application processes into little confinement boxes and only allow them to do the things that we want to do them to do. That means, for example, you can decide that an application can't access files in particular locations. The way AppArmor is configured is it has a configuration file that gets compiled in. And here's an example line from one of those files. It just says, this a process with this configuration line applied to it can access files matching a template that are owned by the same user as the process that's running, and it gets read-write access. As you might imagine, these are fairly fine-grained lines and can lead to quite verbose configuration files. An example we'll be looking at later is has these configuration files set up for it. Um, it's rather repetitive stuff, but there are 10,000 lines or so of configuration to be managed. The SNAP technology manages that by ascribing chunks of this into particular interfaces. So for the same thing, we have a list of interfaces. And if you look at that list, you'll find there are a lot of things in the list that pretty much make sense. Um, there's an interface for talking X11, which is a well-known desktop communication protocol. There's an interface for OpenGL, which is used for graphics and so forth. These are much more meaningful and SNAPs provide mechanism to manually or automatically connect and disconnect these. And there's been a fair bit of work by Canonical in refining these interfaces to be useful and meaningful and only allowing the necessary pieces of access to the system. So that's a bit of a brief overview of how confinement is. And now uh, I'm going to do a bit more demonstrating a confined graphical shell. So switch back to the demo here. And I'm in fact going to install a confined shell here on the system. Now the system we're running uh, here is just a small Ubuntu core system on a Raspberry Pi. Ubuntu core is a snapped based distribution. And that means as well as the confinement priorities, it's transactional in the way things can update and it makes it very suitable for um, IoT type of 
systems. They, sorry, it doesn't seem to be running as fast as I was expecting, so I'll have to chat a bit more. Um, and all the applications installed on an Ubuntu core system and all of the system facilities also need to be presented as snaps. So this mere kiosk shell, um, you'll see that the screen will flush in a moment to indicate that mere kiosk has actually started, just runs and provides input and display services to an application. Um, there's no application running. So about the only thing that you'll see on the display here is that there's a cursor moving around. But I have a few applications I've already installed. Hold on a moment. And we can run some of those. Um, Oh, so Raspberry Pi is not the most powerful of the system, so things can start to rather slowly, but we should in a moment see the application start up. Or if it's not starting out, let's see why not. It's because it failed. It always happens to me in a demo. Ah, so here we have an example of how these interfaces can be manually managed. The Wayland connection, which is needed to connect to a kiosk, hasn't actually been connected. If I make that connection, it will now be allowed to start correctly. But it does need restarting. Should now see no errors in the logs. And the applications running against a confined shell on an Ubuntu core system. I'm not going to spend time playing this game at the moment. I'm going to go back and stop it. But that's just an example of a program that you could run. Um, 
I'm going to show another example, which is used a bit more frequently. But I'm first going to make sure the connections are actually there to run it. Now, WPE WebKit Mere Kiosk is a program run made by a company called Glancer and effectively provides a web kiosk. So for a small application where you want, just set that starting. For an application, that you just want to show a web-based output. Uh, this is useful with combination with mere kiosk to provide one application running full screen on a system. A lot of these systems can be found on things like smart displays or uh, help kiosks in various locations. Um, there's a lot of variety to what can be used, and I'll show you some more options with that shortly. Um, this is, of course, just a normal sort of website. You can browse around. You can click on things. And like most things you click on, the first thing you see is some buffering, and then it will spring into life. Or maybe not. Again, it's a small, not very capable system that it's running on, but it will do quite a sensible job for a lot of purposes. Okay, the way this is configured is if we, as our configuration API as part of the snap stuff, you can see there's a set of options you can set, particularly there's a URL. And you can change the URL to what's appropriate to your organization. You do have to say which snap you want to set the URL on. Oops the configuration on. But this will restart the snap and provide it with a different URL. And you have your own website running there. Again, I will stop that and move back to the presentation. A bit more about what you've seen. So, Mere Kiosk is a very simple embedded shell. It's usable for a whole number of purposes. It's an easy way to get a screen working and 
input and connect it to an application. The way this works with confinement is that we're confining the shell and the application separately. So with the last example, the web browser is the application and here's the shell and they combine to give a useful kiosk experience for whatever you're using the website for. They can find separately because graphical shells basically need to handle user input and output and graphics. And a kiosk needs network access and graphics. They access different parts of the system. So if we look at the connections of those two, the connections on mere kiosk are very much simpler. It's got OpenGL, it's got Wayland, it's also got an X11 option there, but that's largely for testing on desktops where you can run the kiosk application, the kiosk shell as an application on a desktop and connect things through it for testing. The access the system what gets to the system is a bit broader. It has a whole load of network related things and it has graphics and access to the Wayland. Ubuntu Core is a whole OS made out of snaps, as I was saying. Um, Part of that is so that things can be updated in a transactional manner. Snaps are immutable things that get added to the file system in one go, including all of the files that are related to that application. There's a whole branch of things in there, but the things that we're looking at are the things at the top, the applications one through N. So this combination of Ubuntu Core and Mia and applications that use Wayland to access Mia kiosk are used in a number of organizations. There's a California-based system that's doing a training mirror with personal exercise machines embedded into it. There's a company in Germany using it to produce information displays, again, on mirrors. And it's also used in embedded environments for process control. But confinement and Mia can do a lot more than that. The kiosk mode of a single full screen application, which is automatically launched outside of the system, is useful for a lot of things, but it is also limited. A normal desktop environment will allow you multiple windowed applications that are launched by the user. And Mia yeah, can be built to do something like that. Um, as a training exercise, as an example of how to use the MIR APIs, I wrote something called EGMDE. Uh, there's been some articles in CView about that. And that allows you to do pretty much the same sort of thing. Building on that example, there's an EGMDE confined desktop. And that takes confinement and puts the shell into snap confinement. It can then be deployed onto Ubuntu Core or many other Linux distributions because confined snaps can be run on desktop type installations or server type installations. And the way it's packaged up is to take EGMDE and a collection of applications and put them into a snap. They're all confined together and they can run 
on the system. That's not ideal. We really ought to have the applications access separated because they do have different access requirements. You don't want, for example, access to your input devices for all the applications when only the shell actually needs that. Otherwise, you get problems with key logging and password sniffing and that sort of thing. I'll talk a bit more about that, but first I'll show you what we can do with the EGMD shell. Sorry, I've just clicked on the wrong thing and I need to find the right thing again. So once again, it can take a little while for things to start, but we will get there. Just have a look at the logs to see why I don't see anything. Okay, it is failing to start. Okay, that is annoying because I wanted to show you the capabilities there. Just thinking what the best thing to do. Oh, we'll just try a different version and see if that works better. Actually, I will try stopping me a kiosk. That looks more like it. Okay, I probably had EGMD and Mere Kiosk confined to use some of the same resources. So this is EGMD. Let's get that out of the way a moment. It's a simple system. Uh, very simple way of launching things. 
you press a key combination and you can scroll through a list of applications. A normal windowed applications that will appear on the screen. Can be moved around, resized, whatever. You can press Control or T, a combi favorite combination for putting up a shell. And this is a confined shell within a confined shell um, and has the same sort of problems that you might see elsewhere. I'm not sure how readable it is, but typically you get permission denied if you try and do things. You can run applications that are installed in the SNAP. So, So, if we move back to the presentation, we can run the terminal emulator in the SNAP because we included a terminal emulator in the SNAP. And it has the same access as the rest of the SNAP. Um, we can run a web browser in the SNAP. And this system of the applications we've chosen can be on whatever those applications. You can run them on an embedded device. Here's a picture of it running on a Raspberry Pi. You can even install it on a desktop system and run that as a login shell. And as mentioned before, you can run this sort of thing as a window within the desktop, and it still has the same confinement restrictions that apply to the SNAP. It's not a finished product, it's a proof of concept because you really have to have a well curated collection of applications for a finished product that meets a particular need but it's a useful approach to provide a confined environment that works on Ubuntu core, on classic Linux systems um, with the variety of applications. The variety of applications is what gives you the best opportunity for bespoking this. So another example I've put together is a variant of this. Uh, it's a modified version of EGMDE that only allows one application to run at a time. It uses the same menu uh, and it's a collection of games from the Ubuntu archive. There's nothing particular special about these games. You can install them on other systems, but it just demonstrates the options within the concept. one game at a time. You don't want to play two games at a time anyway, mostly. But this again is using the, all the applications and the shell are wrapped up in the same snap confinement with the same access to the system. 
that's not ideal. You really want to separate things out because shells and apps are different things and they have different needs. So a shell, like we said, it needs access to user input and output graphics, launching applications, and a desktop environment. Typically for a real desktop type system, we also want things like helpers for key rings, policy kicks, access to screensaver interfaces, screen lock suspends, logout, shutdown. Applications need less access. Um, they need some access to your home directory, certainly the files you want to work with with them. It would not be much use to have a word processor that can't access word processing documents. They may need access to network, removable media, or other devices and file systems. Now, that's largely solved for the applications because there's a lot more snaps being built for different types of application, and that's where the work's gone in. For shells, I'm not going to talk about the desktop environment stuff. That typically drops out of things like DBus interfaces. Um, the user input and output is already working and launching apps currently only works within the same snap. There's a number of issues to be addressed dealing with launching apps. Identifying the available apps, if they, you need to make so necessary parts of the file system to identify the applications accessible to the snap shell. You need to work, run things and things like the desktop entry specification, say how things should work on a Linux desktop, but may not be easily translated to a confined environment where things may or may not work uh, as they do in traditional systems. And one of the principal limitations is that confined snaps cannot directly invoke other snaps because they don't have access to the system commands to do that. On desktop type systems, there's a user D process that we can send a message to, but that would have to know what to do with the message. It would need to know what rules there are for valid messages. And it's only available on classic type systems. It's not available on the Ubuntu core, at least not yet. Um, the Ubuntu touch system that I alluded to in relation to clicks had some prior art. It had an uproot process that did pretty much the same thing. So that's a future direction that I've been working on. So in summary, near kiosk is a system for kiosk type operations where you just want one application to run on the system. You want it to run full screen and you need something to handle input and output. EGM confined desktop demonstrates what you could do with the confined desktop environments, but currently needs a variety of applications included in it. It will work on classic systems, it will run on core systems. Mirkade is a similar example, just doing the same sort of thing with some games. I've got a proposal to change SnapD to allow, allow snaps to launch other snaps. Um, that's been under review for some time, but hopefully something will happen with that. Now there's a sort of more hands-on part of this talk that I want to get to. But before that, I want to make sure that there are no questions that I can deal with. So. 
is everyone with me or are there questions that are, have arisen from what I've been talking about? I see nothing in the q and I see nothing in the chat. So I will assume from that there are no questions. So you don't have to, to follow this, but you're welcome to try playing along if you have a Linux system around that's so got Git installed and you can have the snapped D set up. Um, Ubuntu systems will typically have snapd set up. Oh, there is a question. Hold on a moment. So Mike Crow asks, what is the performance impact of snap confinement? It's very small. Um, I don't have actual figures, but this is a very quick look up on system calls. And there's been a lot of work optimizing it. It's a small cost compared with the transition from user space to kernel space. Um, certainly, it's not something I've been able to had any need to measure. So. So I'm just going to go through some stuff with what's involved in making a SNAP system. Um, two SNAPs are required for building SNAPs. Uh, and they would be installed using SNAP install classic Mac SNAPcraft. Um, I'm not I think you can drop the classic from the install command for multipass. And as an example snap, there's a archive that can be uh, checked out from GitHub with the GMD confined snap that I was talking about. Uh, typical demonstrator. Yeah, I've actually pulled up in my IDE a different snap, the Mercade one, which is rather similar. And this is the contents of that snap. There's a configuration file for one of the games. Oh. Um, there's a bunch of setup scripts that set up the environment to ensure, for example, that the games come up full screen. But the real guts of the snap is in a snapcraft.yaml file. So there's a bit of information at the top that basically describes the snap in terms for the user. And then there's a section called apps that describe how to launch the system. So that will launch EGMD and on core systems, it will run as a daemon which means it starts automatically. And again, that starts EGMDE. Plugs here is to do with the interfaces that the system uses. Uh, OpenGL, audio playback, network bind, login D session control. That is to do with being able to log into the system um, from 
a greater. There's some layout, which is setting up a bind namespace to provide, put things in the places that applications expect them to. If you're building snaps, you'll find that a lot of applications have specific locations that they expect files to exist in, and snaps work on a slightly modified file system, so you need to bind mount them to get things to work right. The part section is what goes into the, part, the snap. So for Neverball, you need to stage the package Neverball. It takes it from the Ubuntu archive and puts it into the snap. Likewise, never part, Starfighter, SuperTax, and so forth. EGMDE is slightly different. That uses a CMake plugin to build it, and it takes it from GitHub. So during the snap build, it will check that out. It will run CMake, it will run make, it will build it, and it will stage it into the snap. There's a lot, bunch of largely graphic related files that are needed for different things. And these are the architectures that this snap works on. So the way things are built is you type the magic word snapcraft and it reads in this snapcraft.yaml file. It starts up a virtual machine. And slowly on, it pulls in all the packages that are related and bundles it up as a snap. This can take some time. So once again, any questions, thoughts, comments? Okay, so Mike Crowell's asking about developing snaps for private use within the company. Can you publish them to an internal server and install them from there? Um, ish is the answer to that. Um, SnapD is designed around having a single authoritative snap store for supplying snaps and that is owned by Canonical, not an, it's not an internal server. There are commercial offerings to provide restricted access gateways through that for particular companies. Um, 
but that's a commercial, not a widely available option. And clearly, you need a certain scale before that becomes relevant. You can, of course, sideload things because um, that's what you do in development. You can create snaps as I'm doing here and put them onto the file system and install them directly from that file system onto individual machines. There's nothing inherent in the technology of SnapD that prevents other applications. Uh, services providing the snaps, but typically they would go to the canonical web store, snap store, and access things from there. Um, is there a follow on to that or have I covered what you needed to know? I will just wait for this process to finish and then demonstrate that process of side loading assist a package. But it would be good to know if there's anything more I can tell you that's useful for this, useful to you from this material. Actually, I may be able to do something quicker than that. Because I've probably bought this before. So yes, so I can install this locally built now. Maybe I can't. Maybe that's being created at the moment. So this is snap install with the dangerous is the way of installing a clearly defined United you know, Snap file. You can copy these from one system to the other and they will just run. But that doesn't give you a means of automatically updating them or distributing them, which you get from the use of the Snap Store itself. Okay, well, um, sorry, things went a bit wonky there. Um, it's unusual. Um, but I think we're pretty much finished as that problem came up unless there are more issues we can discuss.